We're ready now to finish up our interpreter with environments, so I'm going to redraw the pictures from before, but instead of drawing a bubble, I will draw our environment representations as plate expressions. So if we are interpreting this LUT expression in the empty environment, then the way that is done is interpreting this one and adding a binding to the environment. X is bound to one, and then we interpret the body of the LUT. And again, in this case, we're going to interpret the body of the LUT where we've extended the environment once again. Eventually, when we interpret y, uh, we will have the current environment, the set of deferred substitutions, that say y should be 2, and the lookup function will convert that y to a 2 for us. So we have interp, we have all of the cases that we had before, but now I've added ide and let e. IDE is when we have reach, an reach a variable like y or x, so lookup is already doing all the hard work for us there. Um, we, we have the app e not filled in because we've changed the representation of environments, but it, it turns out to be easier to look at the let e, k first, let e case first. So let's do that. Uh, let's suppose, as an example, that we have uh, the expression that we're interpreting, let x be plus 1, 2, and times xx. So clearly we want to get a 9 out here, and the way we want to do that is by interpreting this first expression, plus 1, 2, Right, so that's the right hand side. That's interpreting plus one two to get a three. And then we want to conceptually substitute three in for x in times xx. But in fact, we're just going to interp times xx with an extended environment. And we do that by binding n. n comes from the let e, so it corresponds to the symbol x. We've just bound x to three. We're extending our current environment. We don't want to throw away any of the substitutions that we currently have. We want to keep them all and just add this new one. And then with this extended environment, that's what we use to interpret the body expression. So notice that uh, we had two expressions, right-hand side and body. We're recurring on both of them, but uh, one is nested inside the other because the environment is acting like an accumulator. We're accumulating bindings as we recur into the body. Right? And when we interp times xx with an extended environment that binds x to 3, then we'll get a 9 out as we wanted. Let's look at the application case now, because it also involves substitution, which we're replacing with environments. Suppose that we have a function call f applied to plus 1, 2, where f is uh, defined to be taken x and multiply it by itself. So the code that we had before is still useful. We need to go find that definition. That's what getfindef does. So fd has the name f, it has the argument x, and it has the body expression times xx. What we want to do with the application is first evaluate the plus one two. So that's an interp on the argument, uh, just the, the natural recursion as you expect from the template. When we get a three back, we want to bind that to x while we evaluate the body. So we're going to have bind, and then the way we get x, x comes from the function definition, is to look inside the function definition and get the argument name out. So that's our new binding, and we're going to use that binding as we interpret the body of the function, which again comes from fd, that's fd bodies. We also pass along the defs. Uh, as we always do, it's along for the ride. I've left some dot dot dots, though, because I haven't talked about which environment we extend with the binding. What namings are in effect as we go to the body? And let's take a little detour with one more example. Suppose we had bad defined as take an x and add x to y. But this is a free y. This y is a bad y. It should be a free variable error when we get here. And let's suppose that we call bad inside of a let binding where we let y equal 2. But this y is unrelated to that y. This y is only supposed to be visible in the body. So even though, as we interpret this expression, we end up with a, an environment that says y is 2, when we call the function bad, we don't want to remember that y is 2. We want to evaluate the plus xy from the body only with x equals 10, right? because that's the only substitution that should have happened by the time we get here. If we were doing substitutions, we would have substituted only x in the body, so as we start the environment here, we should have only x in the, uh, in the environment. That means that we're binding x starting with, here's where we're binding x, we should start with the empty environment every time we call a function. Every function starts out with the empty environment and then a binding for its argument. So when you put all those pieces together, then we've got a complete interpreter using, uh, using environments.